Tim, positions of strength and some that might be thin in this uh, in this season's draft. Well, I think where this draft is really at its strongest is quarterback, especially when you look at the top. Trevor Lawrence from Clemson going number probably going number one. About as sure a thing when it comes to a draft prospect, I think, since Andrew Luck all the way back in 2012. And there's three other guys who could go top 10. Receivers, another position that could be very top 10 heavy with three guys potentially going in that top 10. I like this offensive tackle class. When I look at the weaknesses of this class, I kind of zero in on a couple of positions, one being tight end, um, because I really think there's only going to be one first rounder potentially at tight end, maybe two. Defensive tackles, one where we've seen guys kind of slide down as the season's gone along. And running back as well, I think, is one that is not necessarily super strong, but I do think it's a gap above defensive tackles. I think you get at least should have one first round back, maybe two. But after that, there's some unknowns, some lesser name, lesser known guys, I should say. But all in all, I think it's a draft that's pretty good and pretty deep. When you look, you mentioned wide receivers. Is there, are there guys that you think that are speed guys that might last, you know, until the Browns take, a, you know, the second, third round pick? Speed is obviously going to be kind of the, the buzzword for the Browns. Uh, is there anybody that you like wide receiver wise that has some speed that you think might be around um, later in the draft? Because I don't think they're going to do that, you know, early necessarily. Well, one guy I really like when it comes to speed is Rondale Moore out of Purdue. This was a guy I was really excited to see play way back in 2018 when he was a true freshman. I mean, even from his first game, he I think he had two first quarter touchdowns, just dynamic with the ball in his hands, had had more than 100 plus receptions as a true freshman. And he's 5'9", 180 pounds, but don't mistake that for being small. I, I said in my mock draft, he's short, but not small. The reason I say that is before he even played a game, he bat squatted almost 600 pounds at 5'9", 180 pounds. So he's incredibly strong. You can see that explosiveness. Injuries are a bit of a question with him because he hasn't played a full season outside of his freshman year at Purdue. Limited time. He initially opted out of the season, but when the Big Ten announced it was coming back, he played a few games. Um, When I see more, I think he's a guy that can really stretch the field, but also a guy that you just get you just get the ball in his hands and he's a guy that can turn a I think a one or two yard pass into a ten or twelve yard pass and I don't think you can have enough of those guys in this NFL. You look at it, how difficult is it going to be to evaluate guys because you, you mentioned a lot of them opted out. There wasn't the normal, you know, ten game schedule for everybody. It was compressed. You weren't playing the normal things. You're not gonna have the normal combine. How, how difficult do you think evaluating these guys will be this year for for the nfl teams well it's going to be obviously difficult because with no nfl combine you're not necessarily getting true measurables you're not getting the players working out on the field at lucas oil stadium you're not getting those things that you normally get but i do think what helps this class is that there, is that there was a season and i know there were guys like Jamar Chase from LSU or Micah Parsons from Penn State who opted out, didn't play in the season, and that's okay for them. They're pretty much top 10 picks. I mean, I think Jamar Chase is certainly in the discussion to be the number one receiver, even though Devontae Smith from Alabama had quite the season in 2020. I mean, he won the Heisman for a reason. Micah Parsons, he didn't play, but he's a guy that I think is still solidly the number one linebacker in this class. But the fact that we got games, even any games, let alone getting a full season, getting us all the way to a national championship, certainly helps. I, as I remember writing a mock draft of what it would be like if there, this was back in August, if there was no season in 2020. Thankfully, we were able to get one. Um, we got we got a lot of players that really rose up throughout the season that benefited from playing that probably would not have been first rounders or even draftable guys had they not played this year.